And we are live. How are you doing, coaches? We, we already have coaches in here waiting to see you, JT, because you were the man. And we want, and we just lost them. We <laughs> gotta love live. What's up, coaches? JT is going to be back. Uh, he got so excited that y'all were here that there he is. He, he just, he got excited. You there? Can you hear me? Uh, no, I'm not used to being on someone else's rig. See, I hit a button, got me excited, and like took me to wherever I go on this fancy side. You got the fancy setup over here. I'm I got, yeah, life. yeah. But we're here. We're excited. I don't have, I'm still working on my stream deck because I don't know if y'all guys have been on his live when he does the live. I freaking love him. The, the messages, the, the little emojis, the stickers, all of that stuff. But we are here. We've got coaches coming. Um, if you retweeted, you can go ahead and retweet that still get into it because at the end of this talk, we're going to give away one of, uh, JT's pass pro, which is unbelievable. And I even, I'm going to be honest, I learned something from it because pass pro was always my weakest thing as a coach. It Come was, on. Come on. It, it was, it was something that I wasn't good at that I had to spend time on just backpedal, right? Now, yeah, that's it, right? You just say, hey, guys, just block these guys, and I'm, I don't care what's going on with everybody else. <laughs> I want to talk about that, and then I want to get into your new thing, Quick Game, because I freaking love Quick Game, and we've actually talked a lot about Quick Game. But how long did it take you to learn about the pass protection? Like, was that something you were taught in high school and you learned, or was that something in college or not until you got to the pros? What was it? Uh, I had a, a very, very, very vague sense of it in uh, in college. Uh, we did a lot of six man half slide and uh you know i knew i was hot if one side two guys came that was like the extent of it uh i basically spent a year my second year in the league i met with our offensive line coach i was in new orleans playing for the saints a guy named jack henry was the offensive line coach longtime coach in the league <laughs> this probably he probably hated me <laughs> every friday friday in the league is a half day and uh most people call it like date night you get to go out on the town have a good time whatever and uh, I'm, I asked Jack if he would meet with me an hour after every Friday to go over one protection a week. So I figured if we did the whole that all week, all year, I would become pretty comfortable. And sure enough, I did. But, you know, we were, it was like 18 uh, master courses and it was great. I went over every single thing and got really comfortable with the language. I think, I think a lot of people just don't know the language. So if you're only used to, you know, routes and those types of things and you know, what the hell are all these calls? What are they doing? All those, it's not that complicated, right? But you got to know how to communicate it. And once I broke that down, I felt much more comfortable. So you got your PhD in pass protection with the Saints. Like a master's. <laughs> awesome. No, that's going to tie into the quick game. You just put out something, and I'm just going to go ahead, uh, a free quick game course. I'm going to go ahead and plug that bad boy because it is unbelievable. Coaches, it is in the chat. Get it. It is. The uh, price is right. The price is right. Amazing. I mean, uh, we have talked about, I, I don't, I think I've lost count how many times we've actually talked about stick over and over again. Why I love stick. Dick, what are the reads and everything like that? I know y'all just start. Are y'all back practicing now, right? Yeah, we were on practice three today. How did that go? Well, we haven't put in stick yet. Oh, God. But, uh, it went horribly. <laughs> you know, we're still, we're all locked up on our five yard completions for not, not running with the ball when we catch it right now. So, uh, no, uh, there, there's a time and place with stick. I love stick nod, it is great red zone concept. But, you know, I make fun of it, but actually I was just talking with uh, some friends of the channel and they were about one of my my favorite, one of my favorite air raid concepts, the old 618 wheel. Let's go rank yeah. it up. And yeah. I, I have no experience with it. Never run it, never coached it, never done anything. But I love how it plays with space and uh, is it really simple, looks like a simple read. I love quads like that, quick out from the boundary or from the backfield. And so... That part of it is cool. I, I do. There are just so many different ways to do it. I'm just such a, honestly, I'm just a fan of quarterback play. I like getting completions. I like being simple. I like, you know, all the things that I think we're aligned with in that regard, but you still need to be able to do it, right? It's not like recess where we do go, you know, go run a button hook and I'll rip it on you, those types of things. So 
the scheme element to me, I, I don't think is the most challenging thing in the world, but I do think that it takes some time, some timing, some repetition, some trust. And uh, it does take some technique too, because, you know, I'm a big fan of like throwing without the laces in the quick game, especially from the gun. And so, you know, if you've never done that before, it's an adjustment. And so all those things kind of come together to get completions going fast, move and staying on the move, all those types of things that I believe in philosophically, offensively, tethered into the quick game specifically. All right. You said a lot of great things. And I want to uh -oh. a lot of vocab for your PhD that, you know, lonely masters of math. I have to decipher. You saw but that shot earlier. All right. <laughs> I like what you said about throwing without the laces. And that's something I have to get my kids to do because they don't want to. They always want to get the laces. Do you have like a, a drill or something that you do in practice to get your quarterback comfortable with throwing without the laces? Yeah, no, but you, everyone, I don't know I, how many people are in here right now, but they might want to write this right one. They might want to write this one down. Warm up without the laces. That's the secret. That is the secret. Once I, did that as a player, my uh, ability to throw without the laces when I really needed to in games skyrocketed. So I make our quarterbacks, you guessed it, warm up, throw without the laces. We even do pat and go without the laces. And so yeah, those yeah. things, and if I see them cheating, I'll call them on it and I'll call them in on it in front of the group. And so they know that that's the rule, that's the expectation. Anytime that they take a drop, I allow them, we promote getting the laces. Now, I've had some quarterbacks not have the laces anytime. I don't think that's a smart decision, but in the quick game, in the screen game, grip it and rip it, baby. I love that. I love that. And coaches, thank you all so much for being here. Hey, seriously, if you like this, if you love enjoying uh, JT's aesthetics with his camera, we were talking shop off air, uh, please smash that like button down below. And invite people in, man. We're, we're, we're closing in on 100 coaches. If you have any questions, put them in the chat as well. Um, we've got, JT, this is for you, man. This isn't for me. We've got Whoa. Coach Bear is on the elliptical listening to your information right now because he loves you and your channel so much. And he's trying to clap. Now, if I tried to clap on the elliptical, I would fall and bust my ass. That's just me. That's why I played linebacker. And I wasn't as twinkle toes as you as a quarterback. Because were you were you really a linebacker? I was a linebacker, and here's my All claim right. to fame: when I was in ninth grade, our quarterback here we go got suspended because he slapped a teacher for uh Jeez. yeah I mean just slapped the shit out of her. And I since I was the coach's son, they're like you're the smartest one. You can just kind of protect us a little bit, hand the ball off over that. You're going to be a quarterback. So I actually played quarterback in a varsity game as a ninth grader. Whoa. Now here's How'd the that thing. go. The team we were playing was in Georgia. I played in Georgia, and they had not won a game in six years. They were on Paul Harvey's. More to the story about how they haven't won a game in six years. Well, lo and behold, they play us, and we lost on the last second. Come on, bro. Bro, we're down by – we were down, going in. We're down by five. So if we score, we win. On the 30-yard line, we run a post. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I just draw it back and I just throw it. I'm just like, fuck it. I'm going to throw it to this dude and I'm throwing it. Picked off. They ran it back for a touchdown. They dug our grass up and they took it back to their place and planted it in their end zone. And after <laughs> that, I never played quarterback again. <laughs> I mean, they literally took your turf. They That's did. brutal, bro. Yeah, man. man. That's a tough story. Wow. I don't know why you shared that. Because <laughs> <That's>... I, <laughs> I would take that to the grave. Yeah, maybe, here, check out JT's course. I'll see all this. I'm going. <laughs> let's, let's 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 talk post production here. Uh, no, that's brutal. <laughs> I honestly I couldn't have imagined uh, playing varsity football as a freshman. Honestly, I, I barely imagined it as a junior. So I just tip my hat to the fact that you went out there and let that size of human come after you you know i was a i was a wee little one compared to go, running around with the varsity guys so that's that's crazy good yeah, for man. you I, but that's why I, I have a that right there is the reason why i try to go above and beyond and why i pick the brains of smarter people like yourself Easy. to try to keep my quarterbacks because i don't want them to be in the spot where they give up a six-year losing streak and have the other team steal their turf and then take it back to their place i want to know everything and that's with the quick game. We're tying that back. Do you see how I tied that back? I like that. There? Yeah, I see what All you right. did. 
Now, besides the hitches, because I know that's your favorite quick game concept right there. <laughs> well, that's a sweet irony with this, right? <laughs> and I talk about that in the course. They're like some of my least favorite things are in the are in the quick game. So it is fun to be like honest about hitches, uh, even some variations of quick outs. You know, there are coaches around here that I'm friends with in San Diego that know like my feelings on both those routes, but you still have to do them to take advantage of space and, and what defenses are giving you. I just think it's important. And I challenge anybody who loves football. You know, I think it's easy, especially when you're a coach and people who are aspiring to be uh, move up the ranks, you kind of have to have a offensive philosophy and it can't, it's not simple enough to say like, Hey, uh, you know, I believe in the past or I'm a, you know, I don't know. I don't, I'm always sensitive to taking shots at air rate guys on your channel, but like any system, any system, insert any system. You can't go into a interview with a principal, athletic director, you know, booster club, university president, and say, "Hey, I'm going to run the West Coast." I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You know, you know football more than they do sitting around the table at these interviews, and so you have to be able to describe what you're trying to build if they ask you. I don't know if they always ask you. But philosophically, for me, it's not that hard. We want our fast guys getting the ball in space, going towards the touch, the end zone. Like it's that simple. So, why would I want our fast guy to run up and turn around and stop? And why would I want him to run towards the sideline? So, you know that that's the thing. And so, it's not always that simple. It's not that you never do those things, but it's philosophically, you know, I think it's important to explain that to the quarterbacks, to the coaches, what we're trying to do, and what the intent of a lot of these plays are. But it doesn't always happen. You still have to, you know, threaten the flat, those types of things. And so there's a time and a place for it. But I do, I, I honestly do have fun in the course talking about that because I'm very explicit about, you know, hitches and what they're for and quick outs and what they're for. Yeah. And that's the first thing we talked about afterwards. When the very first time you came on the show, you were like, man, I don't, I don't like hitches. I don't believe in them. I'm like, okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> like, we're adamant about that. But I mean, and, that's right. Like, yeah, I, you st you stick with it. You have a that's the good thing. I do like that. You have a philosophy. This is the why I think this way, and we're going to do it that way. And I know that that resonates with your players because if you believe for if you stand for something, they're going to be like, okay, coach, coach O'Sullivan. He he hates hitches. We're not going to run them. They probably don't know that though, and maybe some of them do. But like, well, I mean, the opposite is like this is a, a true example because we're in the we're in the thick of camp mode right now. We have ways to attack the flat. We have ways to run hitches, but we have three different ways to run basically a slant. So I just prefer that. And it's not always a slant, but there are three different variations of like, this is what we do versus this. This is what it is versus this. This is a different variation in the RPO world. And so I prefer that because really it's four variations if you count the slot. And so it's different ways to construct that type of attacking route. Now, Everybody in the area probably knows that that's what we prefer as well. So you obviously have to threaten it with other things and dress it up. But again, to me, it's not that philosophically challenging. Like, why would I want to run to the sideline and make a 40-yard throw from hash to sideline for a quick out when I can throw a shorter route and have our guy going towards the end zone? Uh, you're, you're right. And I guess some coaches would do that if they had a guy like Peyton Manning, 6'5", rocket laser arm that can throw it from hash to hash. But a lot of us don't have that. And you cannot just glance over the four different ways you actually run a slant route without giving us a, a, a little breakdown on like what are the different slants that you teach. Well, I consider a glance a, t uh, a slant. So a glance, uh, we call it a, a a grass route where it's a little bit more air rate where we give them free kind of rain as far as if there's not a counting number of steps and they can kind of get into space. Then we run a true slant. And then we run a kind of one-step slant that's a little bit more, I'm used to calling it a dart, but we don't run it a whole lot from the outside unless we're down in the red area. It's more of a slot type route. So just different number of steps. And they all have different adjustments based on, you know, if you're getting pressed or if you have free access and what that looks like. But for me, the, the important part, and I talk about it in the course uh, at some point, because I know it's very important to me because I really thought it took my game to the next level throwing these throws is, any in-breaking route, specifically slants, and specifically versus free access, meaning not press coverage, not cloud, not someone within five yards. Once you learn to not watch the receiver, and what I mean by that is track the receiver, mm -hmm. you really have the opportunity to start anticipating it and putting it out in front of you. 
So I think it's hard to teach anticipation. I've seen some drills where people have like track bags out there and stuff and you can like throw between things. I'm not a huge drill guy, but I can tell you that I stand behind our quarterbacks when we throw slants and tell them not to track the receiver. They know exactly what the landmark is. They know where the ball is supposed to be. They know if it's free access, what, what that means. They know if it's press, I need to change my drop, change my expectation, the timing. But it's really that simple. And I just, we, we rep it, we rep it. And it's, you know, it's part of the process for us. All right. That's great. And hey, we, we got our first super chat. This is my ever first super chat by Wiggly Ghibli hit me on two different platforms. Appreciate it, homie. Hey, okay, so here's the question. He wants to, as a kid, I remember hearing Lee Corso talking about how he loves the quarterback option play, but I don't see the quarterback option and the pros utilize as much. Why is that maybe the inherent danger to the quarterback? There you go. I, there's nothing better than answering your own question. It's <laughs> sweet. You can see the uh, the kind of remnants of of, uh, of what we're bringing to the channel. No, I, I yeah. I mean, you sure you you know, when, especially when you're the face of the franchise. I think we I can think of like Patrick Mahomes recently running some option. The Chiefs love to run that option in meaningful games, and I don't understand it. I don't. And uh, so you know, yeah, I don't I don't understand it. And so I think there's a time and place to run the quarterback in the league. I think it's becoming slightly more acceptable. I still think it's really gnarly to run quarterbacks inside the tackles, like power read type stuff. You know, that type bash type stuff. Like I just. It's just different on Sundays, man. Those collisions are different inside the tackles. You can get, you can protect yourself and think like I think like Russell Wilson's like the best at it, at like protecting himself when he gets outside the pocket. But it's a, it's a lot invested in that player. I agree. I remember first. I I think I know what you're talking about with Patrick Mahomes when he did that little, and it looked like he either had. Yeah, to like, I don't. I'm the type of coach that I do not question any other coach because they're a lot smarter than me. But even that made me go, "Why?" The other one was Dak Prescott when he was just scrambling and he blew out his his knee. Those things right there, and that kind of makes me a little apprehensive at the high school because this year I only had one quarterback. Like I didn't have a backup, and I'm kind of big on zone reads and things like that because I like to get that guy off. But with him, I was kind of like, uh, it made me change my mentality. Do you, does your thinking change as well? Like, hey, I'm not going to run my quarterback that much in high school. Or are you just like, hey, it's high school. I'm going to let him run. And I really don't care about it. Uh, I think it depends. I think last year we had a player, we only had one quarter, I would say, we had one quarterback that I was comfortable with his decision making. And sure enough, uh, he got a concussion the second week in the playoffs and we went from being a 10 personnel team to a 32 unbalanced uh, wildcat ran the ball 40 times and got smoked in the playoffs so that's the difference you know like that's that's what happens that's part of ball you know i always laugh i chuckle i, I say this usually when i s speak in front of like in-person crowds but uh tom moore longtime coach for the colts used to say people would come out to practice and say like hey you know why don't you get your uh Get, well, how come Peyton's the only guy who gets reps? And first of all, that happens at every team in the NFL. No backup gets reps. But they would be like, well, if 18 goes down, we're screwed and we don't practice screwed. You know, <laughs> <And> so <laughs> that, there, there's an element of that too. And so it's part of the deal. There just aren't enough reps for everybody. But uh, the whole running the quarterback thing, I think it depends. I think it's kind of silly to take unnecessary chances, but uh, it, it kind of depends on what the situation is and what your depth is and how, how your system's built. You know, if you're running the option, you know, you don't have a choice. If you're a zone read guy, you, you don't have a choice. I, I dabbled in zone read a little bit when I was playing and just wasn't a fan of it. So I don't necessarily promote it all the time with us. We're a little bit more second level RPO than we are anything else. How was that change from going 10 personnel to 75 unbalanced running the it? Like what, what did you uh, dive into with your trick of plays? Did you like Bro. one of those books behind you that and were like, okay, we're running this offense or what? How about we how about we find out on a Wednesday? <laughs> oh god. Before practice. Uh we did basically our we did a lot. We were an inside zone team last year. We did basically uh we changed everything to unbalance that, did some lead inside outside zone, and that was it. I mean, we didn't have we had a, a really uh impressive young tailback and he was an absolute workhorse that night went for over 350 40 carries just beast and uh you know 
and it, he made it close. He threw two touchdowns too. Probably the two nicest fades we threw all year. He's a dynamic player, but it was uh, you know, you go from that type of mindset, no huddle, hurry up to huddle, wristband, you know, get every offensive lineman in the program out there. It was a, it was, a, it was a mind shift. Has he been in your ear since? Like, hey, coach, listen, put me a quarterback again, unbalanced, and now let's do some quick game, and we'll be very good, and we can win it all. <laughs> well, no, uh, he he transferred, but he uh, he he was in the doghouse for a while because on a fourth down, like halfway through the season, he was we ran like a uh, like a wide zone, and he just threw the ball. Like I'd never seen, I know I'm not familiar with that play where guys just be like, I saw someone and I just threw it. And he also threw it like on the track. Like it wasn't close. <laughs> and I was like, I was just, I've seen stuff coaching for only, and I've only coached one year. I've seen stuff that I don't think I would have ever have seen in 50 years of football in the past year. And so when he did that, I was like, bro, Get I about- can't trust. I can't even trust. Yeah. It wasn't like, I can trust you at tailback. I can't trust you on the field. Like you're not allowed to do that. Like I never thought, I will say that this is a funny one. We're playing. I'm in the. I'm playing for the Frankfurt Galaxy. We're playing the. Uh, gosh, I can see their the Hamburg like Sea Dragons or something. We they we're down. They score to take the lead. We are in a two minute drill. We're going to come back and win this game. They kick off to us. Our kick returner catches the ball. Okay, in the end zone. He decides he's going to throw a comeback to the field. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is not—it's not a joke. It wasn't a lateral play. It wasn't anything. He just saw somebody flash like twenty yards to his left, and he threw it to a guy on our team. The guy on our team caught it and ran, and the game was over. It was a safety. It was over. I never seen anything like it. So, like stuff like that, I'm always like, it's funny to look back on, but in the moment, you're like, there's no way that just happened. What? Sure. How was the locker room after that? It was tough. That was a tough day. I felt bad for him. I honestly felt bad for him. When stuff, you know, like it's one thing to be a coach or a, a teammate and be like, "That was a dumb play, whatever." Get on somebody, but like sometimes they're just like out of body experiences where you're just like, "Bro, wh- you can't even." Exp- I, I still can't explain that. Oh man, but I like hearing about those stories because you know, at high school level, you have something as well, and you're just like. It makes me feel good. I know this sounds bad. When I see a professional athlete do something just like my teenage kid would do, and I'm like, okay, well, that's a highly paid athlete. That's a highly paid coaching staff, and they're still facing the same thing. Maybe I won't beat myself up as bad. No, yeah, you know, you're good. And I think we're all facing the same similar similar battles when it comes to that. But, man, every once in a while, I just feel like you see stuff. What did I see the other day? Oh, I hope my quarterback won't get mad at me for saying this, but the, he got flustered and he didn't get flustered. He just something happened where he didn't know like where the pressure was coming from. He just took a knee. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I think I actually put it in. I put out a, a pass pro quiz recently and one of the responses was take a knee. And that was the, that was where I got it from. It really happened. In a in a practice, it was amazing. Has he been watching so much uh, Kyler, and instead of sliding like like he does, he just was like, "I'm gonna take a knee." I've never seen it before, bro. Just like catch this shotgun snap. Ah, I'm gonna take a knee. <laughs> yeah. It's on this. Oh, look at this, uh, Shane, right here. RPO course, which was amazing, by the way. Pass pro course equals fantastic, which means the quick game course can only be one thing: spectacular. And oh. if you want it again, here it is in the chat. Uh, if you come back to the replay, it'll be in the description as well. Now, I want to get into it. Day three, do you have a three-day install, four-day install? Or I know we talked earlier, you already kind of installed everything through Zoom and everything like that. How does practices go now? Wow, that is a great question. You got any advice? <laughs> any advice? Uh, I, I mean, obviously, uh, this year has been turned on its ear a number of different times. Our players have been installed multiple times what we're going to run. It's a condensed season, so it's a little bit silly, in my opinion, to do the normal installations because, you know, you're just not worried about, you know, 10-plus weeks of football. And so, you know, let's just assume, you know, just mathematically, we're never, we'll never get to 100 plays. But if we play five games and we get 100 plays a game, 500 plays, you know, we're – 
we're, we're never going to do we don't need 500 plays and so it's just uh for us it's about being really intentional about things i think we're going to run but also knowing that i don't we don't know this personnel we've only been in you know shorts for 15 months and so two days of shoulder pads and helmets you know, probably doesn't give us a great look either. We've got a significant way to go when it comes to that type of stuff, but we're definitely not doing the normal installations as far as like, you know, today is whatever verticals or, you know, inside zone or things like that. They all know everything. Uh, we'll slow the roll and have like an emphasis for certain periods, but we're, uh, you know, we got five games. We're, we're on to the first opponent here pretty soon. Are you still going like as fast as you can? Or are you kind of slowing it down, doing a little bit of check with me? Or are you just like piss on it? No, I, I enjoy the check with me. I think I, uh, I put, I, if, to, two part question. If I was playing, I would want to go as fast as possible. I realize that my preference isn't always our player's preference. And so, uh, not, I like the ability to always go fast. I always think it's easier to go from crazy fast to, you know, more of a slow peak tempo to, you know, a huddle, muddle, whatever tempo. And so we still definitely prefer to go fast. I think it's cleans everything up on a number of different levels, but at the same time, like day three of camp, you know, we're not going that fast. You know, okay. I would love to say we're working to go fast, but it's a, uh, it's definitely one of those things where we, we only have three weeks and you know, how fast can you really go? I, I don't know. We'll find well, out. Yeah. Let's go as fast <laughs> as possible. All right. We got another one. <laughs> From Wigley, uh, for the past couple of months, I've been trying to figure out what Aaron Rodgers was calling when he yelled at the snap, Scary Ninja. Any thoughts? <laughs> Does he really yell Scary Ninja? I, I have no idea. idea. <laughs> no clue. Uh, yeah, I have no idea either. It's probably like some inside joke between him and like the left tackle or something. I used to do that type of stuff. It's always fun. Uh, no, I have, you, I have no idea. Did you? Uh, I just, you know, from one quarterback to another, I at least... <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Shane wants to know, are y'all going to be streaming the games? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure we are. I'm sure I'm going to get some comments now because I've opened myself up online here. But yeah, I would uh, I would be – I'm. Sh they will absolutely be available right now in our uh, district right now. They're not allowing anybody in the stands, so they will be streamed. Uh, we'll see if that – you know, I always tell – parents and players that that stuff is all in pencil out here but uh it will definitely be streamed at some point can't wait to open myself up to all sorts of uh armchair qu quarterbacks and, and bleach your bleach your coordinators i pr i like your stuff oh man we haven't talked about this yeah where's the uh where's the tiktok gear man was that your gamer headset what do you what do you yeah yeah it was it's right down there man <laughs> I, don't, I don't know i was just bored one day and i i, I just I'm going to be honest. I try to keep up to date with social media because it helps me relate to the kids a little bit better. So I'm not. Bro, you're just a cool guy. Don't play I, off with the kids. I'm whatever. trying. I'm trying. Okay. And that just hit me. I saw like two or three of those videos with that music. I was like, holy crap. That's that's coaches. So I, I just did that. And I'm just bored sometimes. And I just do it. And yeah. I'm now I'm not I'm not coach TikTok up at uh, Washington State now. Shout out. Congrats, big man. I know. Yeah. he uh, He's big time now. He is. He's he, he's doing TikToks in the locker room at Washington State. And I'm like, man, if that's not a flex, I don't know what is. I'm in my rinky dink home office right here with video game uh, head headsets, which I like that you knew there were video game headsets. Because well, I saw that. I saw the neon. The neon <laughs> gave me like, man, you were really upgrading your your setup there. <laughs> I was waiting for like the black light to come on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we got another question from coach. Uh, what are the basic passing concepts that you can't live without? Man, I wish I could throw the logo up. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's all everything, uh, in my opinion, on offenses that I love to be a part of is all based off the vertical. So however you want to you want to say, you know, six, uh, whatever. I think we all teach it a little bit differently. But for me, everything needs to look like a vertical. How do you teach it? Uh, we have a, no, a different ways to do it. I don't. We don't do like what I. I don't, and I'm not an air raid. I'm not certified in anything. But the, the we don't do like the. Uh, we don't do the. I love the inside jokes that are available on football <laughs> online world. The uh, the like the fall. I think you guys can fall out on the outside or comebacks or whatever I you do. I, I didn't do that. I, I'm not good enough teaching it. I, I swear yeah. to you. I yeah. 
I did. I tagged away from the read as a comeback for my quarterback. So shit. So yeah. he starts to the right. And then if he does, he goes outside, inside running back. Cause I found that if you run the verts and the running back to the flat, there's nobody there. And my quarterback made a living Dude. on just dumping it off. Bro, you, you quarterback. got a quarter. You're teaching a quarterback to throw check downs. You are top single digit percentage of play oh, callers at the high school level. I don't Dude, that, was nice. I don't that was nice. That was nice. You are working that stream deck. I am, man. I, don't, I just accidentally moved that thing, but that was a nice, <laughs> that was a nice sound effect to go with that. I'm I remember you. when you were talking about just the first time we interviewed, throw it to the running back if you can to check down because it's always there. And I was like, you know what? JT's a freaking PhD well, guy. I'm going to do can, that. I can tell you that I can do it better than I can teach it. I'll put it that way. <laughs> I, it's not the easiest thing in the world to get high school students to run a check down, to throw a check down, to do all those types of things. So if you've mastered that, you are, uh, you're doing it right. Why do you think it's difficult for the quarterback at the high school level? Uh, that's a good question. I just don't, I, I don't think that they, you know, there's a number of different reasons probably. One, I think it's hard to do. You have to practice it. It's uh, intentional. You have to know what, you know, open is and be able to, you know, make those quick decisions to get through the, your reads. You know, for us, what I always tell, and I stole this from uh, Mike McCarthy, but I say all the time is, if you can count to three, you can play for me. One, two, three. And very rarely are the reads one, two, three. It's usually one, two, run, or one, run, or one, check down, things like that. But even the check down itself has to be coached, right? You have to be intentional. Hey, you got to get out. Hey, uh, you know, especially if you live in the six person protection world, you got to get out. There's no like, you know, running backs kind of like to like, look around and saunter in their pass protection as opposed to we uh, I try to promote being you know you're a wide receiver just in the backfield you if someone blitzes you have to block them but I want you to exit the backfield like you're running a route and it's easy to say that it's easy to do on air it's easy to do on routes on air it's a hell of a lot harder when you're just ran the ball twice and you have to have a dual read to the field and your guys kind of bluffing and now I want to throw a check down and you're not there and so it's a, it's a combination of all those things. Last year, we hit a couple big check downs, and it was really uh, the running back saying, hey, bro, you're going to throw me the ball. You know, I'm getting out, that type of thing, more than anything else. And that's sometimes that's just playing football. And there is an element of that. Yeah, there, that's the truth at any level. But, uh, you know, to say that we're like doing – we're really good at throwing check downs in seven on seven, we're not that great at throwing check downs, if ever, in real football. Yeah, and I, I'm glad you said seven on seven. I – think maybe my quarterback did a better job this year throwing the check down to the running back than my other quarterbacks because we didn't have seven on seven. And what I mean by that is in seven on seven, at least in South Carolina, if you throw it behind the line of scrimmage, so you're going through your progressions and the quarterback, I mean, the running backs, like the, maybe the, the fourth or fifth one, and you throw it behind the line of scrimmage, it's a dead, dead play. Like they don't count it. Really? So it, it, yeah, for some freaking unknown reason. So I think that kind of gets them in the summer. Like, hey, I got to throw it because this right here is not going to work. And we didn't have that this year. And, I, man, I'm, I promise you, I stressed it. Like, hey, throw it to the running back. Throw it to the running back. Throw it to the running Because to me, that is like a tall sweep. Just yeah, are, you doing, are you doing like uh, like swings and flares? Or are you doing like the fast motion? Or are yeah. you doing... Are you doing like check? I think check downs of like over the ball, like check your protection, run a run over the ball. Are you doing check your protection, run a swing? No, I don't. I don't have my guys because, like you said, my running backs saunter. They 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 step up and then they start coming back into the quarterback's <laughs> vision, and then that makes him freak out because he doesn't know that the run it's the running back. He just feels a body, and he's like, "Oh, yeah. I got to get it out." So I just run them either on a swing, on a tear. Or we did uh, shoot routes this year, and that what's, worked really well. Like pressing the line, shoot route? arrow, I guess. Like right. pressing the line of scrimmage and then getting like two yards past the line of scrimmage. That right. worked really well. Like he was already catching in my court. We practiced that a lot, so he caught it. He was able to throw it in front, catch it, and then turn. I had some quarterbacks would always throw it back, so the running backs turn it backwards. And my, they're like, nah, man, I'm, I'm not doing that. You can throw it in the backfield. Well, yeah, I mean, that that throw is not the easiest throw in the world either. 
you know, if you, especially if you have like a big body guy who can't necessarily work his hips quite as well as you would want it. Now, if you're thrown into a tailback, a little bit better, but I always think of like in the league, you know, you do that power pass and throw it to the fullback out there. You better hand it to that guy or else it's going to make you look like a clown. Yeah, so. but we, we rep the piss out of it and it really worked. And I, I'm not smart enough to do the pass protection. This was before I took your pass protection course and learned all about, you know, the check down and sit downs. But yeah, that's that's all the running back would do. And I was like, you know what? Forget it. Just just take your ass to the flats. Uh -huh. And if you're open, just say ball, ball, ball. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll be honest. My first year coaching in high school football, I probably relied too much on just six person protection because that's what I was used to. And it was totally my own issues, my own biases coming in from the, what I was used to versus what was the best for us. And so uh, this year, hopefully, we'll aspire to have a little bit better of a mix, but it's still the comfort zone. The whole offense, the drop back game is kind of six person centric, but get into some five person stuff. But again, I just, those throws on like that tear motion and those shoots, those are not easy throws. They really aren't. Like people think that throwing a bubble or those types of throws are really easy. Those take significant reps. And and if you throw it poorly, you know, it impacts the ability for that guy to run after the catch and all those types of things. So it's a, it's a, we'll see if it, it becomes part of our DNA. Yeah. I, I'm willing to bet it's not because that's, you know, <laughs> like that sideways, your yeah, shoots, bro. It's, it's it's more like if you have if you're certified, those are the kind of passes that you make. And since you you're not you're not going to do that at all. Which but certification though, which certification? All three of them. <laughs> <laughs> but there's something we practice. We had like a five to ten minute period every single day because I I, I know how hard that is to get that timing down, yeah. and we I made sure that was a part of our. Uh, Offense. We we have we have a coach right here, a new member on how to beat every coverage. FYI, it's great, but why not more tight end stuff, JT? Yeah, I would. And that's a great question. The reason why is because it's hard to find a tight end. Yes, I mean that's the truth for me. Uh, I know people love to say like, just get the uh, backup defensive end. Well, he's a backup defensive end because he's he's backup. You know, like I'm not looking to fill the perimeter the guys that are going to touch the ball with guys who can't start on defense, and so it's just that. You know, it's hard to find big bodies like that. Yeah. Really, it is. It's a lot easier for us to have more slot receivers, teach slots. We got a lot of slot bodies. We got a lot of slot type guys. And so it's just, you know, you're going to spend your time with, you know, one potential hybrid guy that's also your beast on defense, or are you just going to say, hey, go do you, and uh, we'll, we'll live in 10 personnel. I just think it's easier at least at the school that I'm at, we've got a lot more 10 personnel bodies walking around than we do have, uh, you know, 12 personnel, you know, 13 personnel type type per options. I agree. And I, that's something that I get a little frustrated by because people are like, hey, put some tight ends out. Use Find that second string guard. Well, it, <clears throat> it's good. He would be first string guard. And a lot of second string guards don't have hands. Like, they can't catch. So – defensively and i've talked to defensive coordinators they go okay i know this guy's not going to catch the ball i'm going to load the box up and if that guy can't block can't be first string blocking he's he's not going to be good second string so you're kind of limiting your position or your your plays right there and i'm with you man i like getting my guys the ball in space and just i just I, I just think it, i i agree totally i just think it's also easier to be spread out yeah. You know, like, I don't want to bring, like, I'm not sure how many, how people feel about this, but like, I never wanted to bring like a lot of dudes to the party. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, like, don't, let's not roll with all the dudes at the, by the ball, like go spread out. Let's use our space to our advantage. Let's uh, put the stress on them to make tackles in open space. Let's not bring more dudes close to the ball. And so I think it would change if, you know, if we all of a sudden had like a power five type, you know, power forward in the program we would uh certainly do that and there are, you can see the impact of guys like that on sundays and uh, in like power five football yeah they can you know if you expand an edge and create more gaps it can allow you to be more uh carry more volume in the run game but again you are where you what you spend your time doing you know we're not going to spend our time doing that because we just don't have the bodies to do it and so uh it's a it's just a choice based on personnel. It's not that we'll never do it. We're just kind of adaptive to whatever we have in the program. And also, I mean, those guys that are doing that, they're making bank. So that, that they're, they're, I mean, they're kind of rare. I'm telling you, it, it's a unicorn. 
even on Sundays to see a guy who's a true why. And what I mean by that is like, put your hand on the ground and one-on-one drive block, bully block a defensive end in the league. Just, it doesn't happen. Like, you know, it doesn't happen. And then to see a tight end in pass protection block a defensive end, it doesn't happen. Like it doesn't happen. And so, yeah, you might get them on the edge, combo blocking on stretch or things like that, or slice blocking back across sifting, whatever. But like holding your own at the point of attack, it doesn't happen very often. And so to think that we're going to get one at a, you know, every single high school program, it's a, it's tough. And I, I just think it's easier to go 10 personnel. I think it, it cleans up concepts. It cleans up installations. It cleans up how you talk to scheme. It cleans up space. It, uh, it opens things up. And I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, I think it makes the run game a little bit better from a coach's perspective, because now I know where everybody's at. Like there can only be a certain amount of <clears throat> where they go. I, you bring that tight end in, then you're talking about all those freaking techniques that drunk ass uh, Bear Bryant came up with that I cannot remember past the five. Like I don't, he just was like, you know what? I think I made this too easy. Bring the tight end in. Let's let's switch the numbers around and just really mess with people. And it, it, it still messes with me to this day. We have a question. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say the, the only reason that I would be excited about the tight end, and I could see this happening. This hasn't happened out here. I think it happens at a little bit. Uh, and now granted, we're not at the highest level of high school football by any means, but if we were to all of a sudden see like super light boxes, you know, we just don't, we, we see a lot of like high school four, four, like I don't want to bring high school four, four into like a condensed formation. If we saw all of a sudden saw a lot of like quarter three, two. Yeah. Let's let's see if we can get the extra guard in here on the edge. You know that that type of stuff. Where I think in the league it, it's a little bit like that now, where certain teams are basing out of sub or nickel, where it makes more sense to be a little bit more tight end, invest in the tight end position as opposed to you know we don't have like a tight end coach. You know, so who's going to coach the tight end? Like we we got wide receiver coach and a and a quarterback coach. That's that's what we do. I, I will run a lot of tight ends if I had uh, Kelsey though. I'm gonna be completely honest. That's you're a Kelsey fan, huh? I am. I just, yeah, I am. All right. Hey, this is something I've had problems with, and maybe you can help me out. What do you do when your quarterback just goes, you know what? This is my best receiver. I don't care what concept you called. I don't care if he's triple teamed. I'm I'm yeeting it to him, YOLO, and just throwing it out there. How do you break your quarterback of doing that? So this is this touches a sweet spot for me, and I hope my quarterback from last year isn't watching. But even if he is, I've had this conversation with him. Uh it wasn't even our best wide receiver, and that's no knock at the guy he used to throw to. I used to throw he. I used to call it, and I still call it, buddy ball. You're gonna throw it to your buddy. Like we're not we're not about that. Like you don't get to hook up your buddy because he hasn't had a catch for a quarter or a half. You're supposed to throw it where you're supposed to throw it, and if you can't do that, then we're gonna. I'm gonna. Our system is adaptable enough where I can just either take that dude out or push him from. You know, if he's normally the three. I'll push him all the way outside to the field. And I know you can't make that throw, you know, like it's just, it's a uh, things like that, that I would get very frustrated with the buddy ball aspect of it. And it's just a, uh, it's just trying to be transparent. I'll call him out in front of the group, not trying to embarrass him, but just be honest about, you know, this isn't the read. This is where the intention of the play is going. I love to talk. Uh, I think we've talked about this before, but I love to talk the intention of the play. I want everybody to know the, the read, if they have the capacity to hold that information. I usually coach, off the practice film to everybody. I don't necessarily make like a quarterback video and a wide receiver video and an O-line video and a you know slot video. It's just, hey, here's the practice film. If you're going to watch it and get the notes, uh, I'm going to talk to everybody. And so that part of it, I want to be transparent in the process. But I really, really, it got us in trouble a number of times uh, just locking on on our best friend and chucking him the rock. Yeah, I I'm, I like that, buddy ball. I That's something... And it stems from like rec league and, and middle school and stuff like that where they always play. And it's just like, hey, buddy, here's the ball. You haven't touched it. I'm going give it, to give it to you right now. And every time when that does happen, I go back and watch film. And the person he's supposed to throw it to is wide open. <laughs> like, oh, God. You, you, guys are all, you guys are always scheming people wide open, man. That's, Come on. that's what we do on the certificate, just man. Run to grass, bro. Just get to the grass. I'll be open if I could just that's run around wherever. Yard football. <laughs> Backyard football. That's what it's all about. We make things too difficult. <laughs> I want to ask you though. I know. Did you come up with anything technology-wise to help your kids? That, that 
since you were out for like a year and a half? I know you were diving into it and stuff like that. Like, did you use a piece of software that you haven't before or did you do anything different? Because that's something I, I want to do more of. I'm always trying to find like something that I can give it to my kids so that we're not spending eight hours up at the field. They can do it on their own. And invest the time. Yeah. Uh, I think we all, I mean, I was no different than I think most people as far as the Zoom experience for most of it. We probably ebbed in and out of it. Uh, we now are, exper obviously we're in the first week of camp, but we're experimenting with what Zoom looks like moving forward just because we can't meet, right? We can't be in a classroom. We can't do that type of thing that we would normally do. So we're experimenting with like, okay, tonight's a defense night. Tomorrow's an offense night. You know, tonight's a defense night. Those types of things as far as just knowing what the overlap looks like, things like that. I think the only thing probably technology wise, and it's probably just a combination of uh, the platform and just being so, you know, you, the same thing that you do as far as messing around with this stuff all the time is I'll just watch practice and screenshot it and send it to them with notes on it. Same thing. I think everybody does probably through huddle. I just don't do it through huddle just because I'm more comfortable, you know, just doing it the normal way that I do every video on the channel. And so that's probably the one thing other, about it that, that we probably do a little bit different, but that's just because that's the way that I'm used to kind of watching and dissecting film. And so uh, I, I don't have a great answer as far as like any secret sauce. We'll see. I mean, I hope that there are certain things that come out of this thing other than just Zoom that we can be a little bit more strategic with, but we're, we're so early, man. We can barely get lined up on the ball right now. So it's, uh, we the, we'll see. <laughs> hold, hold, hold on. My son just woke up and he's screaming. I like it. Go downstairs, buddy. We're, just we're, woke up, bro. What, what you're in for a I long did. night? Yeah. Here we go. Come on. Say, yeah, say hi. Bring it in. Bring hey. it in. Oh, say, hey. who's this? Who's this is this? Connor. Hey, Connor. Can you say hey? Hey, say buddy. Hey. I like your jammies. Oh, he can't hear me. <laughs> no, Those he can't. Some strong jammies. Hey, he, he picked them out himself. He, buddy. Dude. Hey, I love you. I'll be down there in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> you can you can stay, buddy. Fine, that's fine. What, what is he? How old? He is two. He is two. Have, have you have you got like your first like plastic tee ball set? Yes, we do. We have that and golf balls. And uh, he just he likes to attack flowers outside. He doesn't like hitting balls. Oh, like like Caddyshack. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Right, a little seven iron. Hopefully, like that. he hasn't talked. He doesn't talk like Bill Murray yet. So hopefully, <laughs> good parents, we won't have that happen right there. But he, uh, yeah, he just likes to to kick balls as well. Hey, we got another question. Is this true, man? Is it Wiggly's just just Wiggly's Wiggly's it crushing right you up today? You can throw it past the corona. How do you say that? Co 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 corona. <laughs> oh man, you probably think it's La Jolla too. No, uh, Coronado Islands. Can you throw you gotta, it right we, we got to get you out to the Coronado. I live on Coronado. Uh, I want to come out there when, whenever I get vaccinated. I can't, can't do yeah, anything you, like. You got to be up, bro. Be up. Are they? What, what's it? What's it out? Like, I like out there. They gotten teachers locked in here pretty soon. No, it's it's all old people. That's it. We. Well, uh, I mean, we appreciate old people. We were going to move up, but our governor was like, no. But then he ordered all the bars open because he has his priorities right. So, you know, got to get drunk first, teacher wow. second, but that's off my soapbox. I want to know, and this is something, do you believe in the wet ball? <laughs> I, well, I see the question like the wet ball, like you just had the equipment guy dump it in a bucket. Yes. No, no, that really pisses me off. I despise that day. That means to me that you're a defensive coach and that's no disrespect to defensive coaches. I like some defensive coaches, but never have I ever experienced a ball that's just been dunked in a pool. Uh, I do think that there is some strategy to practicing with a wet ball. Like for instance, in high school, uh, we use a rubber ball if it's wet, just because one, I don't want to ruin the nice balls. And yeah. two, I just think it's easier to play with a rubber ball. Uh, I don't think you're allowed to do that in college or I probably would have. Uh, but so we do that at the high school level. I just think it's easier. I also, when it was a wet ball and I was a pro, I used a glove most of the time. The glove impacted my ability to throw with any sort of touch, but if if I could just rip it as hard as I could and I just drive every throw, it was fine. So that's that's kind of what I did. We don't we definitely don't do that. Like it maybe 
miss out here once a year. So it's uh we're we're, we're pretty That's we're pretty nice. good with the weather. It was like it was we went to the beach this weekend, so it was it's not right. bad out here. We we had the beach in our backyard because it rained for an entire week and a half. So yeah, you know, I kind of I kind I feel you, man. I feel you. It's the same Dude, thing. I'm, it's nice out here. Don't 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 be coming out here with that with that Rona. <laughs> Do you advocate for your for your high school players to wear gloves? Do you are are you cool with that? You mean the wide receivers or the quarterbacks? The quarterback. uh, I don't know if I've seen a quarterback wear a glove, at least in our program. Uh, I'm I'm fine with whatever they need to be able to handle the rock. I don't care what they do as long as they throw it straight to the right person on time. And they uh, don't play the ball. Yeah, no, like yeah, it's uh, I, I personally was never a huge thing about the the only thing I really impacted me with the weather was like winter mix, like when it was cold and like slushy and like sideways wind. That was never cool. But if it was just windy or it was just rain or just snow, I felt like the offense kind of has the advantage on a number of different levels, especially at the higher levels of football where, you know, if it's a Sunday game, there's ball boys. Like the ball's pretty much dry. You know, like it's not like uh, it's not like you're getting like a ball that's soaked in a bucket of water every single time you're running out there. It's just that's just not reality. And so I think once you get past the initial fear of being like, oh, this thing's going to slip out like a slider you know it's a uh, you're pretty good who started that was that john gruden that did the wet ball oh i would imagine it was lo around long before him uh, i don't i don't know who started it but whoever should be you know dunk themselves most people if you tell them that if you give them the choice where would you go back if you can go back in time who would you stop a lot of them say hitler you probably uh, yeah. the guy that created the wet ball drill that's oh. it's i don't know if it's quite on par but i could see i i see where you're going there yeah no i wish you could have seen your facial expression when i said that <laughs> oh, uh, anytime you drop the hitler bomb you know all of a sudden i think i'm like getting into like a leadership class and we're talking morality on it we just took a crazy turn <laughs> i want to be honest i don't know how many people in high school actually do that like uh, i've talked to a lot of coaches that say really? they try to do it but we don't have that many balls to begin with. <laughs> right. And the ones that we do, I'm fighting with the kicker because they seem to take them all and would just want to go off to the side and just kick field goal. Our kicker kicks so many field goals in practice, yet we never kick in a game. And it's like, why? You know what he should be practicing? What? Onside kicks. <laughs> yes. Are you going <laughs> just, onside kicks this year? On. We did it. We, we've never kicked off, bro. We only do onside kicks. How, 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 what percentage did you recover? Oh, this hurts my soul. I want to say it was like, it wasn't as high as we wanted. We were aspiring for 20%. I think it ended up being like high 16%. It wasn't, we were going really good for a long time and then we hit a real dry stretch. Why do you uh, think that was? Uh, I think a number of different reasons. We might have been emphasizing getting a little bit cute with like different kicks as opposed to doing the few that I felt like we were really good at. And so we'll see. I'm def I'm taking a more uh uh what's the right decision right word like a more uh lead role in the kickoff unit this year. And okay. so we'll uh we're definitely I mean I have no problem saying it. we we don't we don't have a kickoff. We only have onside kick. So that's nice. So how many uh onside kicks do you have do you have like two or three? Well, yeah, this is a problem. Last year we carried probably five. Oh, wow. I would say like one or two were good. One was good for sure. The other ones were kind of, uh, you know, I don't. We never did them enough to get like a a real kind of uh, commitment as far as the output. But I would like to be able to carry three. You know, kind of like I think of it as almost like a major league pitcher. You know, like I, I want a good fastball. I want a strikeout pitch. I want like something to keep you guessing. But we don't need like five pitches. Do you, how often do you go for it on fourth down then? We don't have a punt team. <laughs> so we go I for it, it every time. Every time. It's not, it, make, it. it makes the decision pretty easy. Yes, it does. And okay. What percentage of your throws are quick game? Well, yeah, and this gets into the subject of like, are we counting just pure drop back quick game or are we counting RPO quicks that are thrown? What do you think? Do you think that <laughs> I see what you did there? Uh, I think as a coach and an offensive architect, I think that they're blended and that they don't have to be pulled apart. I think to teach it in a course, for instance, 
uh, I would teach only dropback. And so if we're talking just pure dropback, we're talking single digits. If we're talking tethered to an RPO, we're talking uh, of the things that we throw, I would guess over 50%. Okay. All right. I like that. Do you fold? So let's say uh, you're installing a quick game. Is that quick game you're installing that day the same RPO that you're installing that day? Or do you have two different un installs? Uh, that's a good question. I don't break it up quite like that. We spend a lot of time on our RPO tags. That's probably the most amount of time we spend in the passing game. And so all of those RPO tags are also part of quick game concepts, but we don't dump them all in the same install, if that makes yeah. sense. So we'll do like a slant day. We'll do an outbreaking route day. We'll do a, you know, that type of thing. We'll do a stationary day for your, your favorite hitches. And, but it's not like, uh, you know, for the, for the RPO tags, it's just when we do RPO tags, it's all the RPO tags. That's your old way. Did you change it up this year since it's something new or you still keep that same philosophy? As far as the installations? Yeah. We're not really doing, oh, I mean, when we did installation, so we've installed the whole offense three times over the course of Zooms. Uh, so we're not having like camp installations. We're just practicing. And we also can't meet as a team, and I don't want them to have to practice and then sit in a Zoom. Uh, I just that makes sense. So we're just we're just kind of we're trying to be really good at a handful of things, especially with a condensed season. Like it just it's not worth it to put in so many things. You know, that, I think I reached out to you at one point, being like, "What was the least amount of concepts you ever carried in a game?" And yeah. so you know, I know you could just roll with like two or three, but like you know. Certified. I need <laughs> I need, I need, no, I, you, uh, there's a dude on, I, I'm a big fan of the Peloton and there's a dude on there that, uh, one of the trainers that says certify your greatness. So now you got me thinking that the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> we, I would love to be as simple as possible. You know, I keep getting emails blasting me about being more simple. I just want to be more simple. And so it's like one of those things where, uh, we're trying to, fine tune it. We just don't have enough time to install and get good at things. Like normally, you know, if you're going to do seven on seven and you're going to have time to like, okay, these are all of our, you know, shallows and these are all of our meshes and these are all of our smashes. And, you know, we carry a number of different, last year we carried a number of different smashes, different ways to get to the post. I don't know if we can do, you know, we might not be able to do any if we, if we, you know, if we can't throw a slant here pretty soon. So it's like, uh, you know, just being able to, I'm a big fan of, I don't have like, this is the five day installation and no matter what the next day we're installing this it's like hey i feel like we don't understand this concept so we're not moving on because this one builds on that one and so you know it's 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 one of those things where they almost have to earn the right to have more volume in the offense if they don't earn my trust in knowing that they can run it and run it at a high level then we're just gonna keep running hitches i like that because that's <laughs> Uh, good. It's about time you came around to the hitches. Now we got a question. Uh, what is your go-to quick concept versus cover seven and palms? And if you don't know what cover seven and palms is, JT has a great course on uh, pass coverages. Uh, so you should check that out. But what's your answer to this question? Well, I mean, like all great answers, uh, it depends to a certain extent, right? Like it depends on the level of football you're at. It depends on, you know, what your capacity is playing quarterback and on the perimeter. You know, if I know a team is a cover seven team, I'm going to get in and we're in high school or college. I'm going to get in three by one and I'm going to throw on the to the field to where I know the one on one is all the time. That's just what I want to do. There are ways to scheme up like in breaking routes based off uh, formations. But if we're searching for one on ones, I'm going to put my dude out there. And if they decide to go put two people over there, then we're going to have numbers somewhere else. And so if you don't have a guy who can throw to the field, a uh, one-on-one, -on -one, then you got to get a lot more creative. I think you can get into, you know, different condensed sets, different motions, things to take advantage of leverage, but th that's cover seven. The palms thing for me, you know, I'm, I'm always looking to throw it down the field. So let's run someone right at that corner, make him think that he's going to go make a great hit or pick and, and throw it right by his ear in the whole shot. Now it's hard to play a whole game throwing whole shots. You know, there are, there are reasons why they're doing that. You're probably going to have to run the rock. And I think I'd RPO the hell out of someone who did both of those things. And anytime you see split field coverage, 
you know, I feel pretty good about the opportunity to, to get in there and do the RPO thing. And so it's uh, just about whatever, again, you are what you spend your time doing. You know, if we see cover seven, I don't, we don't see a whole lot of cover seven at high school out here. I know there are some gurus on Twitter that, that are the, the seven masters that, that run that stuff all over the place. But like I that, cause I got my ass chewed for saying something like that. Well, that's the truth though. Like we, I'll be honest, like we, t- we spent a lot of time last year trying to teach variations of quarters and uh it was totally my own ignorance about you know we're out here at seven on seven and everybody's spinning it all over the place in five wide and then you get out and play real games and nobody has more than two receivers and yeah. so it's like you know it's ba- it's my bad it's not anybody else's bad it's my fault for thinking that that the seven on seven was real football and so you know that's just not the reality uh for what a lot of people do scheme wise and so i don't think you necessarily at least in in our area need to be a cover seven type team a cover seven type team it's high volume it's a lot of thinking it's a significant amount of adjustments yes it creates a great amount of flexibility and i love the match stuff it really is great it's difficult to play against it's always tight coverage but it's pretty hard to teach <laughs> like i don't have the capacity to do it so we're not running cover seven what coverage do you like for your defense and this is going to sound just like what I would give on the offensive thing, but like it, it's based on our personnel. Like we, if we've got enough corners that if our, we trust our corners to play man coverage, let's play man. Cause we face a majority of teams are going to run the rock. If we, it. if we don't have dudes that we can trust out there to cover and make a tackle against probably their best athlete, then we got to get creative with ways we can hedge help and what that looks like. But you know, I, I think for us, I, I honestly, it was my own issue first year, uh, coaching mistake to think that everybody was going to kind of aspire to do what I think, what I think is the best offense out there, you know, as far as the spread stuff and what that world looks like, it's just, people just aren't doing to do that. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, you gotta be able to stop power and you gotta be able to stop double wing. And so, you know, I would get bored in the first, you know, two practice sessions doing that, but you know, people have done it for a long time. That's what they know. That's what they're going to do. And we got to find a way to do it. We can't make excuses about getting rolled over. I love it. I great, great answer, man. I wouldn't expect less from a PhD. Easy certified. Uh, we're gonna pick the winner because my boy is. I know is, he's he, he's, oh, a he's a trooper. he's a trooper, man. He's a night owl. He just locked in. He's a trooper, but he just whispered to me. Uh, he wants to go to bed. So Same. we're gonna pick the winner right now. Now again, let's. Guys, we did this before. Let's not have this issue where... So what's going to happen? I'm going to hit the submit button. It's going to pull whoever retweeted the tweet talking about JT's new course and all everything like that. And then, hold on, my computer. I, that's the one bad thing about Max. There we go. Um, let me do that again. I swear. Got to love going live. Come on, Connor. I know, Connor. Hit the button. Hit the button. All right, so here we go. Submit. Up. Oh, didn't work. Let me grab... <sighs> How do you even do this, bro? You're so savvy with this stuff. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. All right, here we go. Let me get this. Boom. Let me bring it back up here. Look at this. This is what it's all about. Submit. Just build up the suspense. Here we go. Coach EJ Young 3. Boom. That is the winner. If you're here, this is what you're going to do. Do not say here because everybody's going to say here, and I don't know. You need to tweet at me. Say, Coach, give me JT's course, and then I will hook you up. So, uh, Coach EJ Young the third or the three, I'm guessing, uh, hit me up on Twitter. I will get you access to that course. For everyone else that is here, I can't – seriously, you need to – Get on the JT's quick game course. Get in there. Get because some com- he, get some completions. And and learn how to run the hitches. Again, that's JT's favorite play. He loves gonna, it. You're going to be shocked when the whole course is hitches. Hitches and fade out. That's it. That's that's all it is. But- <laughs> I definitely take a shot at fade out in the course. I'll put it out right now. I take a shot. I take a lot of subtle jabs in this course, and uh, fade out is definitely one of them. You can tell you had fun doing it, man. And I appreciate you doing it. It's 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 so good. Well, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to chat about it. It's it is fun. Honestly, it is fun because quick game is like real life. Like not everybody has a power five guy, you know, spinning the ball around and finding completions 
and being creative in the space is uh is it's it's only you're only really bounded by your own creativity so i as much as i do uh like to have fun with it it is there's an important part of what we do it's an important part of how we teach ball i think it's an important part of high level quarterback play and if you're an aspiring quarterback you know you got to be able to do it in gun and under center i think that's the other thing that like uh as you move up you know whether you're a gun guy or under center guy as a coach if you're a player and you aspire to play at the highest levels you have to do both so there's no excuses i don't know how to do it i don't know how to do this i've never been asked to do this my program doesn't do this if you play at high level football you have to do both and so it's important to learn I'm glad you said that because this is world premiere. I'm going to do a little under center this year. Oh, snap. I know. How are you going to practice that? Are you going to do like a full on like quarterback center exchange period? Yep. Wow. Yes, I am. I know. So I'm going to be blowing your phone up because again, truth be told, I'm not. That's uh, that's what I'm learning in the off season and, and getting myself ready because I'm not an expert at this. I need someone that's a, a former NFL quarterback that that has a PhD and then has some kick-ass courses. I well, need to pick his brain in the offseason. So that's what we're doing. I will I will tell you, and I definitely talk about this in the second video of the course. My big I have a number of pet peeves about the quarterback position, but one of them specifically about under center. And you don't really see it because really you only see under center now at the highest levels of ball, or at least I do. At least under center throwing the ball. Okay, every, a lot of people do under center for other things, but drop back game, throwing the ball. When the quarterback gets the snap and puts his head down, I literally, I know that they don't know what they're doing. That's like the first thing to see. Like the whole reason you're under center is to keep your eyes up. You can keep your eyes up the whole time. So like teaching that in that quarterback center exchange, whether it's just like, you know, the random number thing or whatever, they can't put their head down because that's the whole advantage you get by being under center is being able to always see. And so that's the first thing I would say. Okay. I'm, I'm right. There you go. There you go. Don Connor, Connor head up, head up, head (laughs) up. There you go. See, he did it. He did it. You man, you look at you coaching. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. JT, thanks for being here, man. I appreciate it. Uh, coaches, thank y'all so much. Uh, be on the lookout. I'm going to, this will be on the replay. I'm also going to be emailing the course out to everybody else. It's on my email list because it really is. It's phenomenal. Um, anything else you want to say before I go and throw my little man in the bed and go to sleep? No, man. Just good night, Connor. Have a good one, buddy. Can you say night, Connor? He, he, he gave you a half, a half wave. I appreciate coaches, that. Thank y'all so much. And I will see y'all later.